Hey, it's your old cousin Jack, and we've got lots of good stuff on today's episode of Wood Carving Weekly. For example, we'll talk about sharpening edge tools, V tools, gouges, you name it. We'll also mention a handy device that you might want to add to your tool collection. We'll have some tutorials on turning the head of a carving, another one on carving a cowboy figure, and we'll learn about some embarrassing wood carving. Let's get started. As always, I have links for you to all of the resources that I mentioned in this episode. All you have to do is look below this video in the description and you'll see all the links. I also place them in the comments section a little further down on the page below this video. So I checked the internet so you don't have to. So today we have a carver profile on professional master carver, Mary May. Mary's carving journey started in 1991 on a visit to Europe where she was fascinated by the ornate carvings that she saw there in the palaces, mansions, and cathedrals that she visited as a tourist. Well, when she got back home to Minneapolis, she really wanted to get into wood carving and she was able to find a mentor, Konstantinos Papadakis, a Greek carver who had immigrated to the United States was very skilled in the European style of carving. And Mary studied under Konstantinos for three years, learning a lot about the ornate types of carving she saw while she was over in Europe. Well, after that three years, she had an opportunity to return to Europe, and she did. And while she was there, she got into stone carving. And while she was carving her very first piece, a professional stone carver saw her work and invited her to go to Malaysia to help with a project carving various stone sculptures to decorate a mansion there in Malaysia. So when she was asked if she wanted to do that, she said, mm, let me think about it. Uh, yes, I do want to go. And she spent the next six months as a professional stone carver over there in Malaysia. Now, she also uh, has done so many things and one of the things I want to share with you is a photo of the largest stone sculpture that she ever did eight feet high a pair of dolphins uh, just some beautiful work well nowadays Mary makes her home in Charleston South Carolina where she operates the Mary May School of Traditional Wood Carving she has a website where you can find many many resources for example, she has a blog with lots of articles about wood carving, so many things. And on the website, there's a listing there of all of the upcoming classes that she'll be teaching in different locations here in the U.S. and right there in Charleston where she lives. Mary also includes articles that she has written. There are links there to TV productions that she has appeared on, like The Woodwright Shop with Roy Underhill. I think she was on his show four or five times. So Mary is a very highly skilled woodcarver and teacher. And by the way, she also has a YouTube channel. And today I'm sharing a link to her website and then also to the YouTube channel. And that has a playlist just for you. It's all about sharpening edge tools. Mary shows you how to sharpen gouges, including spoon bent gouges, back bent gouges, V tools, you name it. It's a five part playlist. So make sure you go check out the video and then also click on the link to check out her webpage where you can learn so much more about Mary and about wood carving in general. Enjoy. Well, this next item seems like a handy tool to add to any wood carver's toolbox. Yeah, it's a product review. And this tool is great for anyone who struggles with holding on to the wood while carving, or anyone who experiences fatigue or soreness in their hands while carving. Over at Clint Rose Carving, a friend Clint did a product review on the Stanley Hobby Vice. It has a lot of different movement to it, seems like a handy little tool, and his review was pretty thorough. He wrote that review and recorded the video about a month after he first received the vise and began using it. Well now, two years later, 
I wanted to follow up with Clint and find out a few things about the hobby bike. So I asked him, I said, Clint, are you still using this thing now two years later? I asked how it was holding up over the years and I said, hey, if you could change something about this vice, what would that be? How would you make an improvement to it? Well, Clint wrote me back and here's what he had to say. He says, I use it almost every day, exclamation point. To be honest, it's barely changed since I got it. Just a little bashed up by me, so it's holding up pretty well. The one thing I'd change is to maybe have thicker rubber protective jaws. They've been worn down through the years of heavy use by me, and I think they could do with being more substantial. So the Hobby Vice has some little jaw covers for clamping pieces that you don't want to, of course, indent with the metal parts of the clamping jaws. Overall, though, it sounds like Clint is very happy with the product, and I encourage you to take a look at the video, and you'll find out more. For example, what was so surprising to Clint about this little hobby vice? Go check it out. Well, there's a brand new blog post from Donald Mertz over at woodbecarving.com. In the new blog post, Donald is providing a tutorial on carving a cowboy figure. And in the article, he provides a couple of, I guess, example carvings. One that he calls Lefty and one that he calls Doolittle. Now, all of Don's articles have great, I guess, instructions is what I would say. And then also photos. This article includes 39 different photos, progress pictures that take you through the carving of the cowboy figure step by step. And... Donald also threw in a document that shows various, I guess, poses of human hands holding a variety of different objects. He calls it a study of hands. And it's a great resource for anyone who struggles with trying to get all the different facets of the hand. If you're holding, uh, let's say, a staff or maybe a rope or a pistol, you name it, uh, things that cowboys would hold. Anyway, it's a brand new blog post and a great tutorial. Go on over to Woodby Carver and check it out. Well, over at Crosscut Carvings, Jonathan is taking us on a road trip all the way up to North Carolina to visit the barn. Now, Jonathan is going to help us visit with a bunch of wood carvers known as the Barn Wood Carving Group. And in the video, you'll see Alan Goodman providing a lot of instruction to the carvers who are there that day. He's also providing some instruction on setting the edge and profiling tools, sharpening, many, many things. Now, the Barn Wood Carving Group is also found on Facebook. I'll have a link for you where you can find that group if you're interested. And Jonathan, in this video, visits with several of the carvers there, including Wahoo McDaniel, Pat Coffey, and others. Now, near the end of the video, Jonathan shows a couple of the carvings that he worked on during his time there at the barn. And I asked him, I said, Jonathan, how long did it take you to drive up there? He said it took five hours, and it was worth it. I also want to give a shout-out to Jerry Clark. Jerry uh, reached out to me, and he said, hey, Alan Goodman will be appearing at the Smoky Mountain Woodcarvers Festival and show coming up in October. So if you're interested in attending the festival and checking out that woodcarving show, make sure you find out more about the Smoky Mountain Woodcarvers Festival online. Have fun. Well, over at the QS Outdoors YouTube channel, Jeff Gagne has a brand new tutorial. This time around, he's using a piece of wood that's three inches tall and one and a half inches square to show you how to turn the head on the figure when you're carving. Now, in this video, Jeff is solely focused on turning the head and reorienting the positioning of the head. It's not a video where he's carving the entire figure, but he does give you some great instruction on just that, how to reorient the center line and then turn the head on the carving. He does the whole thing with one knife and he's got a new camera angle that he's trying out for his YouTube videos. And I would say it looks great. So go on over there and check it out. Now let's visit with the werewolf Whittler. She lives in Wales. 
and she's got a brand new video where she is doing a little carving, a little painting, talking about tools, and also doing some drawing. And in this video, near the beginning of it, she's doing some sketching. She decides to carve a raven. So she makes a drawing and then she shows you some of the carving of this raven, and later the painting. Afterward, she takes out a cardboard box that she says is her little box of failures. These are carvings that she worked on when she was first getting into wood carving and various items that just didn't turn out quite the way she had intended them to. Anyway, she likes to share some of her thoughts about these carvings, what she liked about them, what she didn't like about them, how she would change them. And it's an interesting video. I think most of us have carvings like that somewhere stored away. Near the end of the video, she talks about the tools that she uses and shares a lot of information. So if you haven't been to the Werewolf Whitler channel, make sure you take a look. Now we'll visit with Mark Spurk over at the Random Acts of Carving YouTube channel. Mark has a new video where he's carving a wood spirit into a piece of catalpa wood. And Mark is a power carver. Throughout this video, he shares information about the burrs that he's using and the effect that he gets from all these different burrs. And you can see, as he's carving, how they work. Now Mark is looking for a different kind of a finish on this one. He wants to leave it unpainted. And so, in the end, when he's finished, he's putting on some Minwax paste wax to get a, a nice, clear, and durable finish. One of the things you'll see in this video is near the end, he uses a little wire brush burr to remove the fuzzies that were created during the carving process. So head on over there and take a look at random acts of carving. I have one more thing for you today, and it's right over here. It's another video loaded with great resources and information for you. I hope you'll check it out and come back again. We'll see you next week.